by now we saw how we, we can use the multilayer perceptron classifier in um, in scikit learn to classify data using neural networks uh, so the only uh, other um, neural network uh, model that uh, Scikit-learn offers is a multi-layer perceptron for regression, so that's basically the same model, only uh, changed slightly to fit uh, our regression problem instead of, instead of a classification problem. Um, however, this is very limited. Uh, we have, um, so, uh, um, there are many other types of neural networks that aren't uh, uh, multi-layer perceptrons, so that aren't uh, fit forward networks that are fully connected uh, to each other. Um, so, um, in order to be able to, uh, to use this type of neural networks in Python, uh, we need to use something other than uh, scikit-learn. And this is where Keras will be uh, useful. So Keras is a library intended, intended specifically for neural networks, and it allows us to uh, create neural networks at a high level, similar to the one of uh, scikit-learn, but it offers uh, um, much more options than uh, scikit-learn does uh, for neural networks. So <coughs> uh, the first, uh, so first we'll go over some some of the features that. Uh, Keras has that um, as that are that make it um, uh, good. The, so there are its advantages that make it um, um, attractive to use. Uh, so first we have multiple types of layers. Uh, so as I said before, uh, uh, Scikit-Learn only offers uh, dense layers that are fully connected, and it only offers uh, feed-forward neural networks. Uh, while with um, with uh, Keras, we can create convolutional neural, neural networks, or we can use convol convolutional layers, then we can use recurrent layers, uh, pooling layers, uh, merged layers, and uh, many others. Uh, then Keras is fairly simple, uh, maybe not as simple as uh, the multi-layer perceptron in scikit-learn, but it's still fairly simple to use and build uh, neural networks using it. And finally, it has large community support, so if we ever run into any problems, we can easily find the solution to them. Uh, so first, let's see how we can install Keras. So Keras uh, uh, needs to use some sort of library for low-level computations in the background. Uh, we don't have to use this directly, however, we can, and that will allow us to have um, even more freedom in defining our neural networks. So uh, one popular popular backend to use is uh, TensorFlow. Uh, we install this using pip install TensorFlow, and then we can also install Keras with pip install uh, Keras. Uh, there are other uh, backend uh, libraries that we could use instead of TensorFlow, such as uh, Tiana and um, others. Uh, but TensorFlow is uh, uh, we're just using Tensor TensorFlow here as an example. So let's look at the general syntax of how we can create a neural network uh, in uh, Keras. So first we need to create a model, which we do uh, by creating an object from this sequential class. Uh, and then we uh, just uh, add layers to the model. So uh, we um, use the add method. Um, uh, we can um, we need uh, a dense um, so we can uh, uh, write the type of layer we want to use in this example we use a dense layer that means that the layer is fully connected so each uh, uh, neuron this uh, layer is connected to every other neuron uh, in um, to every neuron in other layer in the next layer uh, or in the um, in the layers on both sides uh, of uh, the network. And then we say how many neurons we want to have in this layer and which activation function we want to use. So another advantage of uh, Keras is that each layer can have uh, uh, a different um, activation function and we can have different types of layers. So here we don't have to use a dense layer. We could, for example, use a recurrent layer or a convolutional layer and so on. Uh, after we've added all of the layers we want to have uh, with, their, uh, with their number of neurons and activations, uh, we can compile the model using this uh, compile uh, method in which we define which type of uh, loss we want to have, we define the optimizer and which metrics we want to compute. 
Then we can train the model using uh, the fit function. Again, we pass the x and y uh, training sets. Uh, uh, the x and y are the training sets, so the uh, attributes and the um, uh, target variable or the uh, class that we want to predict. Uh, then here we want to split the uh, set into uh, batches. So here we say each uh, batch has a size of 32. We say how many epochs we want to train for, and then we say whether we want to print out the or how much we want to print out of the training process. Uh, and then we can uh, predict and evaluate this model uh, similarly to the um, so in a similar way to the um, to the way we did it in Scikit-Learn. So we can uh, use the evaluate method. Uh, while passing the x and y of the test set to compute um, the accuracy and maybe other metrics that we pass in here. Or we can predict uh, with the model using the predict method. Again, we pass in a set of uh, test um, values that for which we want to uh, predict the labels. So, as we said earlier, uh, uh, Keras allows us to use many different types of layers. Uh, so, here, uh, uh, so here on this slide we have an example of only some of them. Uh, so, some convolution layers that we can use are 1, 2 and uh, 3D convolution, uh, convolution layers. Uh, then, for the current layers, we can use uh, an LSTM layer, a uh, simple RNN layer, a uh, GRU layer and uh, uh, others. And in addition to this uh, convolution and recurrent layers, we can use uh, pooling layers, pre-processing layers, then we can use uh, layers for normalization or for merging of, um, or for merging. Uh, and uh, Keras also allows us to uh, use um, a different activation functions or it has an option for more activation functions than uh, the ones that scikit-learn uh, offers. So here we have the same um, so we uh, can use the same activation functions as the ones that are offered in the multilayer perceptron classifier in scikit-learn. So those are the ReLU, so the rectified uh, linear unit function, uh, the sigmoid function, or the hyperbolic tangent. But we can also use the softmax function, we can use uh, exponential activation functions, then we can use uh, soft plus and cello activation functions. Uh, and um, Keras also offers uh, more advanced uh, activation functions that we can use. And uh, Keras also allows us to implement our, our own activation functions, uh, so we can just write our own custom activation function that uh, uh, we want to use. Uh, and um, another uh, thing that uh, Keras allows us to customize more is the optimizer that's uh, used to... Um, to, uh, to optimize the weights that minimize the loss and in general uh, the advantage of uh, Keras over um, the advantage of, Ker of Keras over scikit-learn for neural networks is uh, uh, the many customization uh, options that it offers.